So welcome to my little guide on FBX Exchange with Lightwave to Motion Builder and so on. What we're going to cover here is the basic text so you've got an understanding of how it works and why it's so weird. There's been a lot of confusion about the FBX Exchange with Lightwave, which plugins to use, which ones not to, and it's created a lot of confusion, so I'm going to demystify it all for you. Okay, so what we see here is a standard FBX bone hierarchy layout. That's it, all set up, ready to go. Now, the first thing that I need to draw your attention to is the pivot rotation of the joints or the bones in your character. Now, what Motion Builder likes is to have joints whose coordinates are parallel to the world axis. So if we look at these joints, just pick any joints that we want, okay? You can just pick any of them, all of them, whatever. And we look at their local axes in translation, we can see that in every view, they are completely parallel to the world. That is exactly what Motion Builder wants to have. Conversely, if we see a joint hierarchy here that's had the pivot rotations recorded, we can see quite plainly that the rotation handles are not parallel to world axis. And if we switch to local axis and translate mode, we can see very clearly that the axes of these joints are misaligned. Motion Builder will go crazy with this. It, it will malfunction and so we get completely bizarre retargeting behavior that does not work. And this has been one of the big hang-ups between going between Lightwave and Motion Builder because it is quite common to record your pivot rotations for bones in Lightwave, but if you do that then it doesn't go into Motion Builder so well. This is one of the reasons why people have used the older plugins, the FBX plugins, um, which were originally by Alias that you can still get off the Autodesk site. Because these plugins were written for LW and the way that things were often set up in LW, they compensated for this fact. But Motion Builder's had a couple of tweaks since those were, you know, the latest plugins. Um, and so whilst you can still use them, it's not the tidiest method anymore. The tidiest method is now this one, where we have all of our joints aligned to the world axis. Now that's great whilst we're in layout, but what about modeler? A lot of folks will of course create their skeletons in modeler and well, here we see a, a skeleton set up in modeler and here it is just brought into layout with the skeletons converted to bones. But you can see, because we haven't recorded the pivot rotation of any of these bones, even though in parent axis in Lightwave, they appear to have their axis going off in all directions, not parallel to world, if we actually look at their local axis, we can see that in fact they are. Now it seems odd, because of course if we look at the rotation handles here for this thing, this is clearly not aligned to the world axis. But if we look down here at the actual coordinates that are on the bone, we can see that it's not at zero. And here's the interesting point. If we select all of the bones and we reset their value for heading pitch and back to zero, 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 what we see is that all of the axes are aligned to world coordinates when at zero, zero, zero. But this gives us this single line of bones because, of course, Lightwave importing skeletons from Modeler has aligned every single skeleton to the world axis. This is why if you set them all to zero, 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 you get this bizarre chain of bones, which is one of the difficulties that people have had in getting skeletons in Lightwave refitted into new characters and still put over to Motion Builder correctly. Sometimes it works out slightly differently and you reset a character skeleton to zero, 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 and you get a bizarre thing like this. Again, it's all gone off at weird angles that are parallel to one another. Once again, if we select them all, we can see that when they are set to zero, 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 even though they're making a terrible shape, um, they are still parallel to world axis. Now, this makes for a bit of a mess when we're in Lightwave. It's perfectly cool for Motion Builder, but it's a bit messy in Lightwave. Hence, this is the best skeleton setup to use. Reason why, if we look at the rotations of any of these bones, not only are they parallel to world axis, but you'll notice they're all at zero, zero, zero as well. How is this achieved, you may wonder? Well, quite simply because we have a joint system, and that was the big change in Motion Builder when it went from bones to joints. For instance, let's look at the foot here. We see that the ankle is parallel to world coordinates, but its child joint, the toes, is down here at an angle. How has this been achieved? Well, this has not been rotated to position the toes. Quite simply, the toe joint has been positioned around. So this is how you position joints. This is the fundamental of how a joint system works. It doesn't rely on the rotation of each joint. It relies on the position between them. And so you can quite happily set up your motion builder rig or 
you can reshape the skeleton simply by just repositioning the joints into the positions where you want them. Their rotational axes will still remain aligned to world, and that is basically one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to rotate your joints. So if you wanted to fit them into a character shaped, you know, in this sort of a fashion like this, then you can do that. You see, you can just rotate the joints to fit the character shape. The only thing that you can't do is record those pivot rotations, because as long as they remain unrecorded, it doesn't matter that the joints have been turned at an angle. At zero, they are still, they are still all aligned to world axis. And that's the real trick, is to have a skeleton which at zero, zero, zero gives you a T pose, so you don't have this terrible mangled mess of bones, and also that all of the joints are still aligned with the world space. And that really is all that there is to it. The only place where this differs is on the actual root, the hips for the FBX rig, uh, which in Lightwave needs to be set to 90, 0, minus 90 on heading, pitch and bank, which allows for the coordinate difference that exists in the rotation order between Lightwave and Motion Builder. So that really is is the big secret to getting us correct skeleton in Motion Builder from Lightwave. Now, if we look at this skeleton, what we can see is that it is in a very rigid T pose. This is what I call perfect T. You'll see that the legs and the spine and the arms and everything, it's all completely linear. It's all straight lines. Now, the way that motion capture retargeting works in Motion Builder is through the fact that it uses a reference pose. The only way that you can retarget animation from one character to another success successfully and predictably is if they have the same base pose, if they have the same rest pose. That's what allows you to be able to retarget the animation data between the two. If you've got one character in a T pose and another in a completely different pose, then it becomes very difficult to be able to get a, a proper retargeting behavior between them. Now, what this does mean that whilst in perfect T, um, this of course creates a very rigid pose for you know, having your characters modelled. Um, and that's not always, you know, completely desirable. But that is fine, because remember what I said, you can always have these things turned at other angles, just so long as when they are at zero, 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 they produce this perfect T-pose. If you are wanting shaping to change the pivot points of things, so for instance, the spine here, if I just select my spine joints, jump into the side view here, you know, you might want a spine that's already got curvature in it because of course it's not just the rotation of the joints that matters it's where they're actually placed for where things will pivot from you know if you want good deformations good proper animation um, then of course you need to have some form of you know reasonably anatomically correct pivots you could rotate them but of course as I said you can just move them so you could create the you know little curvature of the spine in this sort of a fashion, and as far as Motion Builder is concerned, this is still in perfect T-pose, okay? The joints have been offset, their pivot positions have been offset from one another, but their rotations are still relatively the same, and that's the important point. So let's take a little look at this pose and getting things into Motion Builder, shall we? First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, position my arms at a, at a, at a 45-ish degree angle. Okay, I know it's 50 degree, but who's splitting hairs, right? So we imagine that we had our character modelled in this pose, okay? And we're going to export him to Motion Builder. We fitted our FBX skeleton into him, and so we're just going to send him straight out to Motion Builder. Now, as I mentioned before, there have been, you know, different plugins. There's the old Autodesk, or, or rather the old Alias plugins, and before that, the Kadara plugins um, for Lightwave. Lightwave now, of course, has its own native FBX exporter and importer put in by Newtech, which is called Valkyrie. And people have had problems with Valkyrie for the very reasons that I went into before about pivot rotations, because the Valkyrie plugin has been designed to work with the joints system that is in Lightwave 9.6, which matches the way the joint system in Maya, Motion Builder, etc. work. Okay? Standard joint system as you get in 3D software. So for that reason, we no longer need to mess around with the different kinds of plugins that are going on. We can just use the inbuilt Lightwave version. So if I go to File, Export, Export FBX, I get the Valkyrie requester here for Export FBX. Um, 
which version to use, do you want binary or ASCII, doesn't make a difference. Um, the FBX, you can either use the 2611 or the 2900. Um, I found both of these to work fine. I haven't really tested many of the other earlier ones, but there you go. So I'm going to say OK to that, just give it a name and dump it on my desktop there, and that is now exported.